Now, usually babies cry to communicate a need. They're hungry, tired, cold, or they need a diaper change. Then there's something called the witching hour that can really plague newborns for no apparent reason. So in this video, I'll unpack what the witching hour is and how both you and baby can get through this tough time. Hi, I'm Genevieve Holland, the woman behind MamaNatural.com, the number one natural pregnancy and parenting brand. If you have a new baby, I've got a great free email series for you that tracks baby's developmental milestones and delivers simple, natural tips to help you and baby thrive. Sign up at MamaNatural.com slash updates. Okay, so first, what exactly is the witching hour? It's kind of a weird name. No, your baby's not gonna be making potions. What it basically means is this time when baby is very crabby, okay? And it usually lasts longer than an hour, unfortunately. It's in the late afternoon until bedtime. And during the witching hour, baby's gonna cry more, it's gonna be fussier, and it's gonna require more soothing and feeding. The witching hour begins when baby is about two to three weeks old, so he or she is kind of waking up to the world, and usually peaks when the baby is around six to eight weeks old. Thankfully, it is just a phase, and most babies will all grow the witching hour around three months. Now, we don't know 100% what causes this phenomenon, but it could be from overstimulation that builds up through the day, exhaustion that builds up throughout the day, or from a dip in milk production if baby is breastfed. If you think about it, baby is so new to this loud, bright, unknown, and stimulating world, and their brains and nervous systems are on overdrive. They have a ton to process. So I think of the witching hour as a short circuit time when baby kind of just needs this reboot. And let me just say, it is tough getting through the witching hour, but there are some things you can do to try to help soothe baby through this bumpy time and to help yourself. So next time your baby won't stop fussing, be sure to try some of these suggestions. Offer the breast or cluster feed. When all else fail, you can offer the boob over and over again if you're a nursing mama, or the bottle if you're formula feeding. But sometimes breastfed babies are fussier than usual because mom actually has a natural dip in prolactin and milk supply during the afternoon. So cluster feeding or allowing baby access to the breast frequently can be a great remedy. Now it might get kind of annoying because baby literally might pop on and off 15 times during this witching hour, but just go with it. Because ultimately this cluster feeding will help to stimulate your breast milk production for your baby's growing body and provide the comfort and closeness that your baby wants. Baby wearing can offer many benefits to a fussy baby. Closeness to mama or papa, a soothing rocking motion, and a warm, safe place to nap. In fact, in one study, regular baby caring reduced baby's crying and fussiness by 43% and up to 51% less during those evening hours, AKA during the witching hour. Now one tip, you wanna avoid forward-facing baby carriers because this can just overstimulate your baby even more. Skin-to-skin -skin contact. Now this has several benefits, including reduced crying, improved mother and baby bonding, and stabilized vitals for the baby. So during skin-to-skin, -skin, your baby's body will naturally relax, and it also helps to release stress-reducing hormones. And as a result, your baby's vitals, like their temperature, their breathing rate, and their heart rate, even their blood sugar, stabilize. Infant massage helps soothe a colicky baby. Research also shows that baby massage lowers cortisol levels, which is that stress hormone, and stimulates melatonin production, which helps babies fall asleep faster and stay asleep longer, which is a double win. You also want to limit stimulation. So reduce your household stimuli. Dim the lights, turn off the TVs, turn off music or just any loud external noise. And you really want to create a peaceful, relaxing atmosphere. This not only helps your baby to unwind during that witching hour, but also will prepare them for bedtime. You also can draw a warm bath. A warm bath, and especially if you add a drop or two of either lavender or cedar wood essential oil, can really reduce crying and promote restful sleep and calm baby. Go for a walk. Nature is good for the baby as it provides a soothing and calming effect. Nature is good for all of us. So going outside just helps to change the atmosphere. There's different sounds, there's the fresh air, the sunshine. So place your baby in a baby carrier and take a stroll around the block your baby will benefit from human touch while listening to the sounds of nature. 
A white noise machine can also really help, especially if your baby is just fried out. That repetitive hypnotic sound can really put baby almost in a trance-like state. So choose a low rumbling sound and keep the volume at a safe level for your baby's delicate ears. Also rocking the babies. Babies experience a lot of movement in the womb and they might be used to that. So it's best to kind of mimic that experience, that safe experience that they had in the womb. So you can rock baby in a glider or you can gently bounce them on a medicine ball or walk with baby and gently bounce them up and down in a baby carrier. I hope some of these tips help your baby. Now keep in mind that you also need to take care of yourself when dealing with a super crabby baby during witching hour. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes it helps so much to know that you're not alone. If you're breastfeeding and your baby is constantly nursing and doing that cluster feeding, be sure you're applying some kind of ointment on your nipples after every nursing session just to prevent cracking or irritation. You also want to be sure that you're doing the basics like eating well, getting plenty of hydration, and also getting good sleep. So be sure to sleep when baby is asleep so that you don't struggle with really bad sleep deprivation because that makes everything worse eat nourishing meals, get plenty of fluids, and be sure you get some exercise each day. Sometimes just talking about the witching hour makes you feel so much better. So talk to your mom, your partner, a friend, and just process what you're feeling. That alone can make such a difference. Now remember, the witching hour will pass, uh, so be sure to try these helpful tips to help ease this period of time, but you will get through it. You've got this, mama. I hope this video is helpful. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell. And head on over to mamanatural.com updates and sign up for my free baby emails. Each week you'll get personalized message that tracks baby's development, plus you'll get natural evidence-based resources for you and baby. Finally, check out my baby care course at mamanaturalbaby.com. It features a holistic pediatrician, an IBCLC certified lactation consultant, and a community of new moms. Get all that info at mamanaturalbaby.com.